Welcome back. Canada's housing market has been a hot topic for Canadians this year as many of them grapple with higher mortgage costs, home prices and a slowing economy. But what lies ahead in the second half of 2023? Let's bring in Robert Kavsik. He's senior economist at BMO Capital Markets for a discussion on just that. Uh, Robert, we've seen real... Uh, first of all, welcome to the program and thank you for making time for us. We've seen real momentum, of course, uh, in Canadian housing markets and home prices in the first half of 2023. Can the momentum last into the second half of the year? Well, the short answer is I think the momentum is going to be tested, partly because the Bank of Canada has come off the sidelines and, and raised rates. We've seen um, pretty significant 50 to 100 basis point move up in mortgage rates ac across the curve for Canadians that are out there shopping right now. Uh, and so you have, you have a lot of affordability stress. And keep in mind, there's a big psychological component to this market too, right? So the market bottomed out and started to accelerate almost the minute the Bank of Canada said they're done raising rates. The flip side of that is now that they're tightening again, I think you've seen the psychology cooled off. Uh, you're probably going to see some listings uh, linger on the market a little bit longer through the summer and, and take some momentum out of out of um, out of the price gains that we've seen at least through through the fall. You talk about psychology. Uh, one thing we've heard from a lot of uh, housing experts in the first half of the year is that during that period of time when Bank of Canada rates stayed steady after the uh, the pause uh, was announced. Uh, a lot of Canadians adjusted to higher rates, which, uh, which went through a period of stability, uh, maybe retooled their ambitions uh, in buying a, a home, either a smaller home, a home in a less expensive area, and went ahead and, and, and bought uh, with those uh, revised uh, ambitions. Uh, do you see that happening in the second half of this year? Well, so I think there there probably was a, a pretty significant amount of pent up demand on the sidelines because when we went through that correction last year, volumes were extremely low. Yet at the same time, you have a million and a half new Canadians basically coming into the country over the last year. So there is fundamental demographic demand out there. Um, you just have this psychological aspect kind of pushing that off, pushing back on that. Who wants to jump into the into the housing market um, and pay a million dollars for an average price home when it's when it's falling at a twenty percent rate? Now that that has bottomed out, I think some of those buyers have come off the sideline. And at the end of the day, we still do have the strongest population growth we've seen since, you know, since at least the early 1970s. Those, those new families and Canadians do need a place to live. And we just physically cannot meet that demand with supply. So um, you're kind of, you have two very, very, very offsetting factors here. We have that fundamental demand strength offset by what's happening in, in the mortgage market and with consumer psychology. And, and I think they're going to kind of come to a bit of a stalemate through the second half of this year. What do you expect in terms of new housing starts across the country? Governments are under pressure, of course, to do something to, to uh, have more homes built. Provincial governments, the federal government to some degree, and certainly municipal governments are under a fair amount of pressure to uh, cut red tape and accelerate the pace of new home construction. Sure, and it, it, it's a worthy goal. Um, unfortunately, from you know, from the minute these 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 targets were published to try and double the rate of housing construction in Canada as a solution to the affordability problem, our view has been that it's just not the solution because not not that it's not a a, a noble or a commendable solution. It's just not one that we can physically come to. So the industry is already operating at pretty much 100% capacity. The unemployment rates at a record low in construction, job vacancies at a record high in construction, the shortage of, of skilled trades is, is very acute. We're building more units physically than we ever have in this country. And on, in per capita terms, we're building as much as we ever have going back to the building boom in the 1970s. So to think that we can double output from this level that is already fully stretched seems like a bit of an ambitious goal. And, and I just, I, 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 I don't think we're going to get it. And this kind of goes back to this whole uh, this whole d demand and supply side imbalance where, yes, we're going to work through this cycle and there might be some ups and downs because of what's happening with monetary policy and maybe the economy in the short run. But when we come out the back end of this cycle, we're going to remain stressed from a demographic perspective because we just physically cannot build the amount of supply needed to meet the number of people coming into Canada. That sounds like a recipe for a long period of uh, rising home prices. Well, I think there is there are two components to this, right? There's the cyclical aspect, which, as we've seen over the last year, we've we've seen a 15 to 20 percent correction in home prices just because there was too much froth in the market and prices had to adjust to a very abrupt increase in policy rates. That's the cyclical side of this. The secular, the longer term side of this, yes, would argue that if we look out over the next five or ten years, there still is demographic stress 
uh, and, and, and just, you know, just, just, just not enough capacity to build on the supply side to meet the flows that we're seeing today, not only from outside the country, but from millennial households moving up and, and, and creating new families and, and requiring more space. To what degree are we still uh, f experiencing the, uh, the after effects, uh, if at all, of that long, long period of ultra low interest rates? Well, I think that's one of the adjustments we're going to have to make as home buyers or as investors. I think a lot of people maybe were kind of lulled into the belief that what we saw over the last decade was normal. I would argue that the interest rate levels that we saw post financial crisis through the early days of the pandemic were the exception, not the norm, right? So if if a potential home buyer or an investor out there is is assuming we're going to just fall back to one and a half percent mortgage rates as we come out of this cycle, I think maybe that's an assumption you want to go and, and look back at and say, you know, maybe that's not the case. Maybe neutral mortgage rates now are, you know, 150 basis points or so higher than we were used to over the last cycle. So, um, yes, I'll, I'll say five to six percent that we're seeing in the market today, if not a bit higher, is is very restrictive. And this is probably isn't permanent either. But I wouldn't sit there on the edge of my seat and and and, and hope that or, you know, I assume we're going to go back to sub 2% mortgage rates anytime over the next couple of years. Robert, thank